my whole system didn't save any of it, so I had to start from the beginning. From the one that Anthony and I did, um, actually what's really fun, like the deep dive that I did last week for the repost, mm -hmm. so I wanted to use some, because I had all the suits unlocked and like, I did all the DLCs and stuff, and for some reason my PS4 deleted all of it. Oh, and I don't know if it's because my PSN, I have to resubscribe. All I know is that I had to start a brand new game from scratch, which actually worked out because like the video ended up just being the first two hours. But what's funny is that the last part of our deep dive was when Peter Parker and Mary Jane are in the coffee shop. And then Stan Lee is like, you know, I always liked you two kids together. So <laughs> I, I cut that out and I stopped it right when he like saw the sirens because I was like, eh, that's not going to work very well. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the F Word Podcast. I am your host, G, and with me is Vass and Anthony. Gentlemen, how you doing? Doing pretty good. Just I'm grinding well. out school. You're finally out of school? Grinding out. Almost, oh, I think cool. there's like three more weeks. That's all right. Mm -hmm. That's not too bad. Um, yeah, last week um, we, had, uh, we were on hiatus. And uh, I unfortunately had to go to a funeral of a friend of mine. And so that's why we had that repost of the deep dive. That was the one of Anthony and I. If you haven't heard that one and you're listening to this episode, it's a cool like how Anthony started his Instagram page, how he went from zero to 80,000, how it was taken down. Back to zero. Back to zero. Um, how the podcast kind of came about, all of that stuff. And it was like, I think it was, it was actually the first time you and I sat down and were able to like just kind of talk about that history, which I thought mm -hmm. was really cool. Because um, I remember the one time we had a discussion on it, and I was like, "It's kind of like the Pearl Mutter and Kevin Feige like mm -hmm. thing that was going on." It was like, you know, at one point, and then back then we hadn't started the Instagram account, so it's kind of like a snapshot in time last year or so. Yeah. So now it's like after watching it and then seeing it, it's like, oh the Instagram's back and the facts are coming back and all of that stuff. So I don't know. It's one of my personal favorite deep dives. Um, so yeah. Any news from your guys's world, anything from the past week from last week that we missed? Uh, well, I'm like, I keep, uh, Oh, you can go first fast. Sorry. No, I'm just trying to think now, like what, what big news came about in the past week? Well, even just your own, like stuff. Oh, like, my own. You know, oh, last nothing, week. Just busy with yeah. work and that's it it's hot out there it's cold some days it's whatever we had a nice little thunderstorm the other day it lasted all of what oh that was that was super nice and weird because i was just chilling on my computer and then i like is it raining oh that's cool and then just starts hailing out of nowhere just heavy pouring mm -hmm. down yep. yeah 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 it was it was wild we didn't get uh hail on our side so like and we're literally like one main road away mm -hmm. but we didn't get any hail i know you guys did though which i thought was really weird it is weird yeah i um i started my cigar smoking habit so i quit my regular smoking habit mm -hmm. and it's been three months and i picked up a cigar smoking habit and by habit i mean one. like a hobby uh good i just had one right now i had a really shitty day at work and so mm -hmm. i was like well i've got an hour to kill and um, and then I was just like, you know what? I was going to save this for Saturday, but I'll just go out now. And then, so mm -hmm. I just got to sit out and it was actually pretty cool. And so on Wednesday, when the thunderstorm happened, cause it was when, no Tuesday. Yeah. Was it yeah, Tuesday? It was, yeah, uh, wait, was. Yes, yeah. Sorry. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. So I was, for some reason, got on the thing on YouTube of looking at like pe people rolling cigars um, and then people talking about cigars and everything. I'm like, Oh, this looks like fun. Like I've never actually had a cigar proper. Mm -hmm. And then Tuesday I went out, I was going to go on Monday. The place was closed. I went on Tuesday and I was like, you know what? I'll just grab a couple. So my dad had an ashtray and a cutter, so I didn't have to buy those. Mm -hmm. And I went to the cigar shop where, uh, where like our dad goes and the guy there was like super helpful. He's like, you don't need anything super expensive. Here's some stuff under 10 bucks. And I think it was like 35 bucks. Plus he threw in like a torch lighter. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, well, I have got this itch. Like, you know, when you get a hobby and you really want to get into it, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And depending on what type of hobby it is, like you have to wait. So in my mind, I had this list of, okay, I need a humidor. I need this. I need that. I need like 30 cigars. I need all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And the guy's looking at the list. He's like, you don't need any of that yet. He's like, take these four. They're under 10 bucks. They're going to take you probably two weeks, especially if you're just starting out because you have to find time to smoke them and then start from here. Well, like so how just, long does an average cigar take to smoke? So I've been diving into some of the sizes. Um, the the most popular ones, like the most popular sizes are the ones that you see most people have. Those are about an hour hmm. to an hour, 20 minutes. But it, like it depends. If you go all the way, if you burn it all the way to the end, it'll be about an hour. Then there's other smaller ones. Uh, not the ones that uh, our dad gets, as in mine and Vass's dad. When I say dad, I mean mine and Vass's dad, um, obviously. <laughs> uh, those ones are like, how long do they take them? Like 20 minutes? Something like that? Yeah. Half an hour? Yeah. Yeah. And then they get they grow from there. Like the ones that Michael Jordan has, for instance, those are called Church- Churchills. And those guys are like almost two hours. Like they're fucking oh, massive. Um but you don't inhale them. You don't constantly smoke them either. It's kind of like you take a puff, you mm. roll it around in your mouth, kind of like wine and such. But in this case, you blow out the smoke. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah. Oh, it's because Churchill sure. smoke these things? Is that why they're called Churchills? Probably. I, I think so, actually. Mm. that's I haven't dove too much into the the actual history of a lot of these. Um, but I've been looking on YouTube and there's like a lot of really good, like you have to light it properly. You have to cut the top off a certain way. Like there, there are nuances and rituals to it, which I like, like, that's why I like going to like fancy restaurants Mm -hmm. that have multiple plates. And like, they'll say, Oh, this thing you have to connect. You have to like mix this with this, put it on top of that. And then you eat it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I enjoy the idea of like the ritual behind certain things. So in this one, it's like, you prep, you have to carve out time out of your day, and if you're if you're doing it by yourself, of course, and like you're committed. Like once you start, you're in it. So it's it's not an everyday thing. Like yesterday I didn't have one. Today I just figured I'm like, oh what the hell? I've got some time to kill and I was having a stressful day. Tomorrow I most likely won't, and maybe on Sunday I will. Like I don't have a craving actually to do it um so far. And I but I haven't gone that far into it. Yeah, it definitely staggers your your initial, uh, I guess, addiction to it. Like you, you can't smoke them regularly. Like they, they're pretty rough sometimes, um, and to get used to them for sure. Um, but yeah, they're nice, nice little. Have you smoked cigars like actual, like proper, oh, yeah. like or cigarillos? Oh, yeah. uh, both. I own. I actually only really smoke cigarillos. Like I have to be pretty trash to have a cigarette, to be honest, and nothing else available. But. Typically, cigarettes like Captain Blacks, like Prime Times, and that kind of stuff are my go-to. Right. Um, but uh, I have a few. I've delved into a few of like the bigger cigars, like Monte Cristos, Romeo and Juliets, Cohibas. Like those are the the main ones. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to actually uh, taste, uh, smoke some that are from Cuba that are kind of like mm. black market almost in a way. Like some guy made them authentic, wow. and yeah. It's pretty good. Well, Again, isn't it in Canada? Uh, like the flavored cigars are banned now. So yeah, they've been for a while, and it's so stupid because like that's not what's gonna get people addicted. Now look, there's these vape pens, and they're everywhere. So what's the point of blocking these Cirellos? Like, for, it doesn't make sense. But whatever. Yeah, they're a good time. Can you guys yeah. uh, hear me? Because like apparently my mic was on mute this entire oh, time. Oh, I can hear you. <laughs> Yeah, I could hear you. Better that, now, because I, I just you've, like, you've been up. registering every time you've talked. Like yeah. you can see, I've been on there, noticing like, that too. But then, yeah. like, I just did this thing. I'm like, oh my god, what the? F- it was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a week off. We have to get back into it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, anyways, that's my that's my new hobby. And luckily, I put the numbers down, and there it's, and even the videos of like the super hardcore cigar smokers, they're like. You don't need anything really over ten dollars, especially for like the first little bit. Like the one that I smoked my first time was like four dollars and ninety five cents. The one I just had right now was like six bucks, and then I've got two other ones. One's nine dollars, and the other one's nine dollars and ninety five cents. Yeah. So, So what's the most expensive cigar on your list that you know the price of? 
I watched a guy review a seven hundred and fifty dollar cigar, <laughs> and it was funny because he was like, "Yeah, it's not that great." <laughs> 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 and then I there are I think there are some there are quite a few in the thousands as well, which is Fuck, absurd dude. to me. Like search. Well, we yeah, e- take a look, man. Yeah, I think Gurkha is a brand that has a seven hundred and fifty, and they have a thousand, and I think a twelve hundred. That's insane. Uh, and like, and I get the artisanal thing of it, but I would never buy. Like, I've been fortunate enough that people have gifted Sofa and I Dom Perignon. We got engaged, and we kept mm-hmm. it. But I wouldn't buy a Dom. Like, yeah. I'd maybe buy it for one of you guys if you guys got engaged or married, or it was like a huge milestone. That's different, like, because we'd all share it. But, like, when it comes to something like a cigar, I mean, it's great. It's artisanal. But I don't know. Like, at most, I think I'd probably cap myself at, like, 50 bucks. Hmm. Maybe. But even then, I would need to have been in it for a while to actually appreciate what a $50 cigar is like. And even, like, wine. Some people, I know some people that are huge into wine. And they're, like, some of my favorite bottles are, like, $15, 20 bucks. Yeah. Well, it's like uh, the one Costco brown compared to uh, Grey Goose, like Kirkland brand vodka is the same as Grey Goose and like for way mm-hmm. less of the price. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That point, it's like a name brand thing more than mm-hmm. an actual flavor thing. For sure. And a lot of these places get away with that, too, using that name brand. Uh, and I'm pretty sure like a lot of the cigars, like some of the big ones that I taught, like that I look at on the websites. Um yeah, they're not that pricey. It's usually when you're buying by the bulk, like by a box. Like if you're buying mm. a box of 20, but yeah. I've noticed, or five or 10 or so. Um, but on average, like the one website has a ton of cigars and the filter limit for the money is zero to $20. I was yeah. like, oh shit, that's pretty good. But it's, again, one of those things you do every once in a while. Um, all right. Before we move on, I oh, just yes, please. this is crazy. So I found the most expensive cigar. And they're oh. called M- M- uh, Mayan cigars, and they okay. cost. Well, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the description first. And I want you to guess. <laughs> so this cigar, it was sold at an auction, and the cigar is 600 years old and was found in 2012 in a village in Guatemala. Uh, they're preserved. You can still smoke them. Guess how much they sold for? I'm gonna say, based on that and your reaction, fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> okay. Oh. Vast, do you want to take a guess? Uh, I'm going to go for the 10 spot, 10,000. 507,000 oh. US dollars. What? Shut up. I will send this <laughs> fucking link. How many? Like just a single one? Or okay, a if I'm pair? looking at the picture, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Still, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> that's so expensive. At that, that point, crazy. it's like I don't even want to smoke that. You're literally <laughs> that's smoking. That's a collector. Hundred thousand dollars. That's so wild. <laughs> that's insane. Oh, that's so crazy. Like even when I was looking at it, I'm like, oh, this thing's like those four cigars were thirty five bucks. I'm like, thirty five bucks every two weeks, which seems like a pretty reasonable thing, um, because like I'm just getting into it, so I'm not super hardcore, and they are like rough. Like I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh man, like this thing's like. Well, they give you a good headrest for sure. For sure, yeah, exactly. The good thing is, I do like not the inhaling part. That's obviously like that's a big thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, that's so wild. That's way too expensive. There's a link. The mm. ten most expensive ones in the world. There you go. It goes from seventy nine to five hundred thousand on that list. That's stupid. The mine. <laughs> Holy crap. That's so wild. <laughs> Jesus, King of Denmark. I've heard of the King of Denmark. Yeah, I've heard that's forty five hundred per cigar. That's wild, crazy. Yeah, mm. I don't know. This is gonna be my. I'm. I'm hope. I'm hoping this will be my hobby for like a while. Mm. It's actually quite relaxing. And most people don't actually drink it with scotch. And I'm a huge fan of scotch, but I just don't drink often. A lot of the guys, especially ones that make cigars, they like it with coffee. Mm. Mm. Yeah, cigars I'm and coffee. Try scotch like, first, I love coffee. I, well, I just don't like coffee. Cognac's up there mm. too. Yeah, basically, I, I have it with scotch myself, and I'll dip the the end in it too. Oh, you, you'll do that, hey? Yeah, like the end you suck out of, or the end that's like getting burned. You suck Probably, out of. Yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> so then, as you're <laughs> inhaling and burning through, it gets the aromas of the scotch. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't heard anybody say that they would do that. 
Yeah, like they've always have. It's a bass special. Yeah, I there guess so. Well, I'm just talking in general, like from the from the sites there. They mm-hmm. never mention. Oh yeah. Like that. But uh, you know, everyone's got their preference, and what's cool is that like, it's it's actually um, one of those things most people talk about where that they've mentioned on the videos that the community around cigars is not as snooty as one would think. Like one guy was talking about, he's yeah. like, I was sitting in a room with like people that make five times more money than I am, and just sharing a cigar and having like talking with people that I would never talk to or, and they would never talk to me. So that's pretty cool. Um, all right, Anthony, Mm -hmm. I've been waiting a week or so to ask you this. I'm sure everybody that's been following us for a while is waiting to hear the Snyder cut is real. It's happening. Mm -hmm. It's coming. I'm, I have to eat my words because I believe I do. did I doubt that it was happening? Or no, was I you, just? I remember in my head, at least, it was along the lines of you saying, or you did say, that it's never going to happen. Mm-hmm. Right. That sounds about right. That sounds like something I would say. And now I can crumple up my words and shove them right in my mouth. Uh, Anthony, go for it, buddy. What are you feeling? Okay, so this is a week later. So all the awe has dropped off, but I am hyped. Just alone for the fact that, because I truthfully, truthfully, I thought it was very, it was a very small chance it was going to happen, but it has. I'm very excited, uh, and I saw a meme about this because someone said, "Well, what if the Snyder Cut sucks?" And the guy responded to saying, "It doesn't matter. No one will like no Snyder Cut fan will ever give you the <laughs> light of day to say it sucks." Yeah. So I'm really hoping it doesn't suck. They're like dropping, I think, forty million into the copy of it because the CGI Yikes. wasn't done. I think like redoing some lines like with the uh, original cast, like get voiceovers. Mm-hmm. But I'm just excited to see, you know, a if the three years of work that the Snyder Cut fans have done because I didn't really do much, I didn't really petition, but a lot of people have spent three years, you know, obsessed over this cut. So I want to see if their hard work pays off and if the movie's actually, you know, like substantially better and actually would have been a success. And I just want, I don't know, there's a lot of like ifs and up about buts, but I'm excited for it. I'm happy. It's something that, you know, Zack Snyder really fucking wanted because he was also like weirdly enough pushing for it. And I have to trust that the people that have seen it, they've also been saying great things about it. So I don't know. It's a lot of nervousness because if it does suck, I know for a fact I'm getting flamed on this podcast, <laughs> but I will likely never admit it. <laughs> No. you'll just well i think you were defending batman v superman for a real long time regardless on what people were saying anyways so well, i know it sucks but i like the movie right that's yeah. my stance on it bass um i don't know i'm not i'm not as hardcore as anthony by any means but definitely interesting that it happened so not quickly but i mean from the conversation happening just this year for the most part right mm-hmm. i would say the most extreme mm-hmm. talks of it happening were just this year and it's actually happening. Like, I mean, maybe it's the power of uh, power of social media that actually made it go forward. But yeah, but it's the money is huge. Apparently, like you're saying 30 million. But <laughs> uh, I think the producers or someone I can't remember. I saw the IGN uh, post, but it's like he's like, let's just say I wish it was only 30 million that they were dishing mm. out to release this thing. So it sounds like they're taking a big uh big risk making this happen <clears throat> and so i i just hope for their sake that it does pay off in some way shape or form like i so it's going on hbo max they said right yep so their subscriptions might spike for that first little bit um and then they'll it'll die off again just like with uh how when game of thrones came out at the time people wanted mm-hmm. to watch it straight and live and that kind of stuff so i don't know it should be very interesting so well, I think HBO Max was probably the biggest thing to get Snyder cut out because if HBO mm-hmm. Max wasn't a thing, I don't think Warner Brothers would have just released it. Yeah, I, I assume because I, I we talked about this on the podcast and I even like mentioned I was saying I think it's going to go to HBO Max and lots of other people are saying it. I'm not trying to claim you know I was the one who called it, but I'm pretty sure HBO Max that was one of their like demands. We can have Warner Brothers come to our you know channel, but we want oh, yeah. the Snyder cut to come too. Yeah. I'm amazed that it actually exists. Like, cause I always, cause it's one of those things that's like, it can't be like, you think that it's real. People say that it's real, but 
it wasn't until I think, like you said, Vass, this this year mm-hmm. or quite recently, where there's been a massive push. Yeah. Um, and so for the fans, I am happy it exists. I am happy that I can eat my words um, because I'm pretty sure it's got to be better than what was put out. I feel as bad for Joss better, Whedon. As long as it is as better, long, it's a yeah. win. Yeah. Yes, and and I think even if it's like, even if there are a couple of scenes that end up being better, mm. like because it's amazing how one or two scenes can really make up a movie, like could really make it good, you know. Um, I'm a defender of Age of Ultron. Mm. I like I like it personally, but I also know that there are there are key scenes in there that actually make it good and fun for me, you know. Mm-hmm. Whereas it's not as good. Near, it's not nearly as good as the first Avengers or the other ones, but there are a few scenes in there that if they weren't in there, it would have been a much lesser film. And so I think even if a lot of the scenes that went on in Justice League that just felt jarring and didn't make sense, kind of get more clarity, I think that could make a huge, huge difference. And I just, I at this point, I'm on the train of, I hope it's good. Yeah. Mostly because just or Zack Snyder has gone through fucking hell like you know losing mm. losing a kid is you know i just went to my buddy's funeral and with his parents there and i've seen that too often recently so fuck i hope mm. it's unreal like i really do well, and honestly, i'm happy for anthony because anthony's all oh, excited now see in my work group chat there were some people were still bashing it because me and this other co-worker are hardcore dc fans and we were so excited and they're like oh it's still gonna be shit and I'm like i don't care like this is just a win either way Mm-hmm. I didn't want to say how weird it is, though, that uh, we're getting a movie coming out. And we've already seen the movie or, you know, a form yeah. of the movie. But the director is still, like, not spoiling it because I don't care about spoilers, per se. Like, I kind of know the basis of what his version was supposed to look like. But we know Darkseid is going to be in this movie. Uh, the actor has that. confirmed yeah. it. We saw, uh, I don't know, like a mock drawing from Zack Snyder of Darkseid. It was a shot up from the film. So I'm just excited to kind of like find out the details of the movie and I'm going to try going in as blind as possible because I've, you know, it's been three years of me kind of knowing about this stuff, but I'm not really that active on it anymore. Mm-hmm. But I think we're going to have to do a recording. We're going to be recording us watching the Snyder Cuts. All right. I'd be down for that. If quarantine's over by then in like a year. For sure. Yeah. Well, and and because I had to go to Calgary, I've been... I've been isolating a little bit. I've been distancing and isolating a little bit more recently because I'll tell you this right now, there was a lot of hugging going on when I was there. Mm. It's uh yeah, there was nothing there was nothing stopping us from from hugging. Like literally I was like, okay, we'll all be careful, we'll all do this. I walk in four people right away, boom, 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 like nothing was happening. Yeah. Did you so, uh, drive yeah, or once, fly? Once my I drove okay. actually, so um I was going to leave. The funeral was Friday. Mm-hmm. I was already planning on leaving Thursday, but I was going to leave Thursday at 3.45, which is a six, hour, six and a half hour drive. So I would have gotten there late. I get a call from one of my buddies that they were actually going to allow a viewing at okay. seven o'clock from seven until nine. I ended up calling my boss and I left at 1.30. I get into Calgary at eight o'clock. I get to the funeral home at around 8.30. So I was able to actually see the viewing because they weren't allowing anybody in the church the next day for the actual funeral. Hmm. But I was able to make it with a half hour left. Fuck. Wow. Yeah, I was... Uh, and, I, and I didn't actually have to speed that much. There were some points where I was speeding because I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. And I was going to leave this to the end, but like, you know, the, like Eli, um, like my buddy and our buddy in Calgary, he's one of the guys that I went on my LA trip with. And that LA trip, I don't know if I mentioned it too much, but it was a pretty, it's one of those moments in my life that it's like a massive, massive deal. And there was a point in that trip where there was like four of us, five of us had gone, but one of the guys like ended up crashing early. And we all ended up on this hill in LA LA at like, after partying all night and just sitting on this hill and having kind of like an entourage moment of sorts, mm. just staring out as L- at LA as the sun was rising. And it was like a very surreal moment. And he was part of that. And I hold that moment very near and dear. And, you know, Eli was part of that crew. 
like was was there and then my buddy jimmy and my buddy nick not the nick from the shows and i've got another another friend nick in uh calgary and the four of us were the last ones at the funeral parlor on thursday <laughs> like because wow. jimmy was a pallbearer nick was a pallbearer and when I went there, there was a couple other people, and I stayed behind a little bit. But it was it was us four essentially with Eli there, and yeah, it was it was it was hard. It's really hard, especially because guy was twenty nine years old, and the, mm. he was just he was one of those people that he's one of those guys that kind of he kept to himself. He didn't make too many big moves. And he always was able to get everything that he needed done, done. Like he just had focus and he was always in the zone, you know, like at, at 29 years old, he was able to like work for BMO doing investment banking at such a high level that most people like do in their, like they enter at 35, Mm, like super successful Mm. guy. Awesome dude. Just, yeah, it was, it was crazy. But anyways, I was able to be there to see him. And then the next day at the funeral, it was raining, it was windy, but we stood outside the church in the rain. And like they were streaming it on YouTube. So one of our buddies had their phone out. Um, and we we're just, yeah, it was it was uh, definitely one that we'll never forget. It just sucks that we weren't able to do it normally at the same time too. So, you know, yeah. what are you going to do? But uh, anyways, I don't know how we got on onto that. But I remember, oh, yeah, we were talking about me going to Calgary and social distancing Mm -hmm. and watching the Snyder Cut. That's what we were talking about. Okay. (laughs) I'm sorry. Brought us back. Um, Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, I think it'll be fun to watch and Mm -hmm. give it a couple of weeks. I think we'll be able to just be in the same houses because I'm doing my isolating and everyone else's. I think we have two active cases right now. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So, um, other news: Henry Cavill is going to be Superman, not in a DC. Is that what the thing is? It's not going to be in DC, but he is still going to play Superman, which I'm happy for. Yeah, hmm. wait, that's wait, good. Wait, wait. He's happy for, play happy about, Superman, but not in DC. The DCU, the DCU. Saying? I think. I think it's going to mm. be like for another person's film, okay. or another Superman mm. movie, whatever it is. That's so weird. He should just. Just do it. I think they're trashing the DCU, honestly. Like, I, I feel like them releasing the so? Snyder Cut. I don't know, man. Well, I, this I is feel... true. Like, if they're releasing the Snyder Cut, they're letting Henry Cavill kind of finish a superhero or do another Superman that's not part of the DCEU. Yeah. I, I feel, it seems like these are a bunch of big plays, especially the Henry Cavill one. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I still think they should try to stick to their plan. Like, they still have another Aquaman coming out and Wonder Woman coming out fairly soon. Um, I don't know. I think they can. I think they can still make it happen. I think they just have to commit and just the. I guess the key is making sure Cavill stays on as Superman for those films as well. Um, maybe maybe it'll go well if he does his first project and say like pending this, come back for the DCU stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know. I think well, I think really, they can do it. It's weird because uh, one of my friends sent me an article around the time Aquaman came out. Like he sent it to me recently, but the article was yeah. from then, and it was saying uh, James Wan was having trouble with the Aquaman script, mm-hmm. and Zack Snyder kind of like showed him the script for the Snyder cut, and to James Wan, Aquaman takes place after the Snyder cut, not after the Joss Whedon cut of Justice League. Okay. I don't think there's any references to this. Not like I don't think there's. I don't know yet. I guess, but I don't think there's any. You know, mm-hmm. things that'll ruin the whole timeline by this. But it just seems like the directors are kind of because I know a lot of people behind the scenes. Like you know, I don't know what's his name, Jason Momoa. He was a Snyder Cut advocate. Yeah. So it just seems mm-hmm. like the, the universe was a mess of kind of that war, like for this one action against the Justice League. Yeah. Well, and and people were a part of it, and if the actors like. When we were talking about it, I think before the lockdown and how all the other um, all the other actors were behind it, mm-hmm. that's when like I was I actually had that inkling in my head. I'm like, I'm probably gonna have to eat my words here because <laughs> there are so many people and the people involved that are behind this thing. And when it comes to Henry Cavill playing Superman, I thought he was a great Superman. I liked Man of Steel, and even if they just do solos. Even if they don't yep. make a DCEU, 
and mm-hmm. they just make his solo movies with a few hints here, a few Easter eggs there, I would be more than happy because I think he's a fantastic Superman. Well, they do great yeah. solo movies, you know, Dark Knight trilogy, Joker, shit like that. They could easily keep doing that. Like, I'd like to see some team up movies, but even if it's just like their DC animated universe is so fucking good. Like, it is a mm. shame that they cannot translate what they've done in the animated scene to the live action. Because yeah. even my brother, like, he wa- he's watching the whole, like, 20 movie slate again. I want to watch them all because I've-, I've watched them out of order. But what they did in the animated scene is like what Marvel did for the MCU. And it's just, if they could do something like that, they'd be golden. Yeah. It's harder in, in movies, though, because, like, at least animated, you can make so many things possible that you can't and you and like yeah you're you, there's it takes longer but like into the spider-verse was a phenomenal spider-man movie mm-hmm. and a, a lot of it was just what they're able to do there versus the cgi like you don't have to worry about all that like imagine if the justice league came out and you didn't have to worry about henry cavill's mustache because it was animated because they just draw yeah. it yeah. you know i bet you a lot of that stuff that people would make were making fun of wouldn't be a factor for mm-hmm. the animated and that's why it's a little bit easier to do it that way the problem with animated is that not many people give it a chance yeah well spider-verse think, had that issue a lot yeah but then well i think most people got on board i know a lot of people that aren't into animated stuff they got right on board and they loved it and i've actually been noticing a lot more people commenting on how they want to see a spider-man game in the in this to the spider-verse animations hmm. yeah which would be awesome, and I'd be all over. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I hope he keeps doing it because Henry Cavill's a great Superman. Um, Tenant, did you guys see the Tenant trailer? I did. I'm kind of Anthony? staying away from this one because if it does come out next month, like I want to go in as blind as possible. But mm-hmm. if you boys, well, let me tell you this: it. I watched the trailer three times. I have no fucking idea what it's about. Yeah, and yet they said that it reveals a lot more. <laughs> I'm like, like ah, I don't think it did. <laughs> all right. I'm like, okay. Like, I'll yeah. just sure, whatever you want, Nolan. Do your thing. Yeah. No, it looks uh, good. I think it looks very interesting. And then I think they showed a little bit of Robert Patterson in this one, whereas before they did not, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. Mm-hmm. So that was good to see his character and that. So yeah. The only thing I realized, and this isn't a I don't think it's a major spoiler, but it's not mm-hmm. time travel, it's time mm-hmm. warping or manipulation. Okay. I think that's what I've been able to gather from some of the synopses that are going around. It's or more not like a, a time travel thing. thing. It's a foresight thing, like it because like no. I, one of the biggest things that stick out for me is they come across where they're gonna be, and it's like, oh, it hasn't happened yet. So mm-hmm. it's like they're seeing the events in the future, like in their time for some reason. So that'll be interesting. And that's where, uh, that's where like I, I saw things to, like to that point. Like, so it's either that or um, yeah, it's definitely not time travel. Like we think it is though. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be super interesting. Um, it looks awesome. It, it's got, I saw one article saying that it kind of has a James Bond feel to it. And it does like it, it looks like it looks like James Bond a little bit. Oh yeah. Like in terms of like the aesthetic, I'm talking cinematography alone, but it's such a clean looking movie. If that makes any sense. I don't know mm-hmm. how like it if does. that does, but I, I yeah, it looks great. But yeah, Anthony, you can watch that trailer a bunch of times. Still have no idea what the fuck it is. Um basically, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. John Wick is pushed to May 27th, 2022, sorry, 2022. And it was supposed uh, to come out 21? It was supposed to come out 21, same month as The Matrix, and they're pushing it back, which I oh, think is... Weird. It sucks. I think it's because they couldn't get production, maybe. No, um, the one that I saw was because they wanted it to not compete with The Matrix. That's fair. Yeah, which is a like big brain play. Uh, yeah, that's one of the things that I saw. I think it's a smart idea to not have two Keanu Reeves movies compete, and yeah. it just the sucks that we day. have to wait John Wick for another year. You know, oh, well, it's probably gonna be a bunch of movies uh, next year that'll keep us entertained because you know all of them yeah. have been canceled and pushed back from this year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, um, um. Last of Us. Did you guys see the Last of Us Two State of Play that went out? I mm-hmm. did not. You did not, Anthony. You saw it. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of watching it right now, actually. 
Yeah, but it's good. These, hey? these clickers are fucking disgusting. Like, it's dude, like have you played the first really... one? I'm playing the first one. Oh, okay, yeah, clickers are scary. But yeah, they look so much more fucked up in this game. Like, yeah, the bow looks super fun. I don't know if there's a bow in the first one, but all the gameplay I've seen of Ellie using the bow all looks like I don't know, just fun mechanics of using the bow. I don't want to spoil anything because the first one is like. I really, really like it, and this one looks so good. And it's interesting because, like, you play as Joel in the first one, mm-hmm. but I was talking to Ethan today, and I was like, a lot of the major story beats. I mean, the story is pretty much about Ellie, but like, you're playing as Joel, and there are, and but really, some of the best moments involve Ellie. Like, even in the cutscenes, mm-hmm. she has these really great smaller moments, and that's why the second one being about her is is just awesome, and. Like it just looks like they're they're just I don't know it looks so good and I like the linear nature of of that I mean that's what Naughty Dog does but I'm I like that I think after so many open world games and the ones that we're going to be getting where it's just like here is everything it's nice to have something a little bit more linear. Well, I don't know uh, if you guys have played Telltale's The Walking Dead, but how. Yeah. Like, the Last of Us reminds me a lot of that, just because in the first season of The Walking Dead, you follow or you play as a guy named Lee, who finds a girl named Clementine, and they kind of go off, blah 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 blah. And uh, in the end of season one, like I don't know how Last of Us ends, but end of season one, uh, Lee dies, and then in the next season, you play as Clementine, and it just I don't know reminds me of the same story. Like both are fucking very praised games. But I'm excited to finish Last of Us because I, st- I haven't really been spoiled for Last of Us. Like I, don't, I really have no idea what that's happened good. in this game. Like it's been like six years. I think that's so. actually quite good. Yeah, yeah. Even Ethan was like, I don't know how I haven't gotten spoiled up until this point, but I'm like, I'm good. I'm, I'm glad you didn't. Has he, Ethan beaten it yet, um, or are we are so, still playing? Not yet, not yet. He, he's still playing it. Um, I think he said tomorrow. He has tomorrow off, so he's just going to play it all day. But like, he's a father of two daughters. So that opening scene, he texted me and he was like, what the fuck, man? And I had told him, I'm like, get on this game, start playing this game. And I'm like, dude, the, 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 the beginning, there's a part in the middle. And then at the end, I've played that. I played The Last of Us one three times, gut punch every time. Mm. And I think that it like even just the opening of the state of play um, that they showed like some of that scenes and a little bit and Neil Druckmann was bringing down a bit of a synopsis I'm like oh they're gonna crush us in the beginning they're gonna have a beautiful moment in the middle and they're gonna crush us at the end and we're just gonna go on like a crazy emotional journey which I am all for hmm. honestly yeah. yeah yeah it's gonna be good there's a lot of games there's there's we've talked about this already last week and you know now that I'm glad that they're we're going to be releasing more. PS5 is going to be coming up with some uh, their stuff pretty quick. How's it Last of Us Two the uh, gotten an official you know new release date yet, or is this still just delayed? No, I think it's June nineteenth. Oh shit! I gotta yeah. beat this game quickly. Yeah, it's about a month away, is what they said. Nice. I believe it's June nineteenth. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. It's going to be awesome. I need to. I need to start. Uh, I need to start putting some money aside. I got to go to EB, start pre-ordering some games, putting some deposits down, doing all that stuff. Because mm. the PS5, once it's revealed in the next month or so, I think that's when they said, it's going to be a frenzy of people getting it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. After yeah. you find the fact, buy a TV. Uh, I was looking at their initial release date for Last of Us 2, and it was actually supposed to be tomorrow. It was originally, yeah? Okay. Yeah. That's probably That makes sense as to why they released the State of Play la- uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, June nineteenth. It says for the next one right now. Yeah, Makes and I say yesterday people, because yeah. it's Thursday today, and yesterday was Wednesday. But most of you are listening to this on Saturday after. Mm, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, tenants. I think comes out mid summer. It comes. It's supposed to come out. So at my theater, we're planning on opening the beginning of July because tenant comes out July fourteenth or something, and mm. they're saying that they're going to keep it for July fourteenth. So we'll see. Okay, okay, okay. Vass, you never played the first Last of Us, right? I have right? not. I just got it uh, with that deal that was going on last uh, Christmas. Oh, and right. I still haven't touched it yet. So, Highly recommend it. It's on my list. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm a. They said it's their biggest game yet, and uh, uh, Drake. So Uncharted: A Thief's End was a pretty big game, mm-hmm. and it was a beautiful game. I love, like, I love it so much. So I'm excited to see how big they mean when they say big. But I'm also at the point where I think games are getting too big, mm-hmm. and yeah. um, reeling it back a little bit is is good. Like for Assassin's Creed, they were saying how it's not as big as Odyssey, and I'm like, good. In fact, make it slightly smaller than Origins, mm-hmm. and just pack it with stuff. Like that's talking, why. To this... Sorry, sorry. Are you talking in terms of map content, like map. where map yeah, is the make, big. Yeah. M- make the map smaller, and. Mm-hmm make it dense and populated. That's why I love Assassin's Creed Unity so much. It is a smaller map. I can, I think I can pretty much, I think I've done it once or I've gone three quarters of the way from one edge of the map to the other, just on rooftops. Mm -hmm. There's one section towards the, the bottom, bottom left or the top. Yeah. Bottom left that it's like a, you can't because of like the the topography, but bring back, smaller maps densely populated not maybe not that extent but have it filled with stuff Mm -hmm. like when i played the witcher 3 which it's five year anniversary was last week um when i replayed it i'm like this map isn't as big but man there's so much to do in it and even sleeping dogs i finished playing sleeping dogs yesterday like the main story and i was like not a gigantic map full of stuff so I hope they do that more and more. Um, where else? What else do I have here? I started watching Modern Family with Soap on season five. It's pretty I good. That's eh? super important, but it's my first time actually watching it start to finish. Yeah, it's it's funny. I'm enjoying oh, it. Oh yeah, it's really good. <laughs> my sister's watching it right now too. Have you seen it? Uh, so I watched it on Plex up to the last season but it wasn't done yet and i just haven't seen the last season so i'm just planning on rewatching it all on netflix after i finish arrested development oh yeah but you have seen it from one until like the newest right one until like beginning of 10 yeah yeah we're on season five right now um i'm I'm, yeah it's it's good it's funny i always like now i'm i'm starting to realize why I never doubted the show as being like, oh, this, you know, everyone likes it. I don't get why. Like, I totally get why now because I'm watching mm-hmm. it. And before I was like, I've seen an episode or two and I'm like, yeah, I can see why people like it. But now I'm like, now I totally see why people love the show. I think it's like one of the most um, successful comedies, isn't it? Or like one of the ones that gets the most awards. It's up there. Oh, yeah, for sure. I don't doubt it. Yeah, I don't doubt it. It's hilarious. And like yeah. the acting in it is so funny. Phil Dunphy and Cam are my favorite. Oh. Yeah. No, the Phil family is the best. Like their main family. Yeah. That's They're it. so <laughs> funny. Um, okay. Did you guys happen to look or, or did you guys happen to read up or see anything on Joe Rogan's $100 million Spotify deal? I have not. I did not. What is it about? Okay. Oh, man. I know this about it. Good. I just didn't read the details behind it. So I've I've kind of looked as as much... I haven't looked too, too deeply in it. I saw him talk about it on his show Mm because I listened to him on a regular basis. So essentially, it's a $100 million exclusive deal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Spotify is spending so much money. The Ringer deal they did was actually more than this. But like, it was for a group of podcasts from what I understand with The Ringer. This is like, is audio exclusively to to Spotify and video and his clips are massive. Like his clips are in the millions on a regular basis. So, so, so you can't post on YouTube. I I think he's pulling his stuff from YouTube. Ooh. What I've what I've understood of this deal is that, and and the implications behind it are crazy. I've had so much fun trying to figure out what this would actually mean going forward. YouTube lately has been having a censorship issue. They're demonetizing mm-hmm. channels that they maybe don't agree with or they don't follow certain things or whatever. Across the mm-hmm. board, like even movie reviewers have been getting their stuff for like even just saying specific words that they're targeted. Anyways, they're demonetizing them, but they're still running the ads for people that are watching them. So they're, they don't like what is being said, but they like the money that's coming through. Okay. And now because of the whole coronavirus thing, I believe the, the World Health Organization has been making sure that they take down videos that are posting stuff that are against what they say. 
which is Mm -hmm. shady, but, you know, it's not even but. It's just shady. And now, by the sounds of this deal, this is where my mind's gone. Spotify is going to be introducing video. So as of September, it's all going over to Spotify, and then they're going to be introducing his video portion, which means Spotify is going to start doing video. And so they're probably going to make a huge play to compete against YouTube. But incorporating the music, the um, podcasting, and whatever else they decide to format, which is huge. My opinion, I think it's huge. Honestly, that's, that's a, the Rogan that they deal. do that, that's a pretty, it's not a bad plan because people are pissed off with YouTube. A majority mm-hmm. of people, like there's tons and tons of podcasts on YouTube. And I'm sure if Joe Rogan goes there and they start introducing clips, lots of other YouTubers who do podcasts as well will upload it to Spotify. Oh, yeah. And and so they'll try I, to get that's in. That's actually a big power play. That's on, that's on an IGTV power play. Like, this is a legitimate power play because YouTube is kind of slipping up right now with their demonetizing you if you fucking sneeze. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. And And I think the other thing is, it's going to be interesting to see what their entrance fee will be and not fee in terms of financial, but like what you need to do to get onto Spotify. Cause I think Spotify has a really, they have a way to turn YouTube into the kids table. Mm-hmm. Like where let's say Rogan goes on there and does his clips. And then let's say other podcasts like Sam Harris or Jordan Peterson or um, the portal or uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, like, super high up intellectuals or even sports podcasts that are really high up there like Jay and Dan and all of them, they are exclusively to Spotify and they release video content on Spotify and you have to. And so they create this world where it's like, if you're coming here, you're listening to serious people and you're watching clips about serious things. If you want to watch cat videos or anything else like that, you can go to YouTube. You'll still have that. But when you're coming into Spotify, and if you're going to play in the Spotify playground, this is the this is the adult table. <laughs> you know, even even guys like Jake Paul, like his yeah. his show is fucking massive. Mm-hmm. And if YouTube's going to be taking down his stuff, if he moves it over to Spotify, and it's still it's a high level video content that he produces, and he has a large fan base. Yeah. So I don't know this. There's. There's so many implications around it. Like, w- there's no way we would be able to get on there. We right? already are, though. Like, well, that's the thing. We're on Spotify. Well, we're on Spotify audio for sure. Like, and and which is which is awesome. But in terms of the video content part of it, I don't know if they if they make it a little bit more restricted. Which I think it would be a, be in their best interest to do that because they can actually control it a little bit better. Because mm-hmm. so I think also YouTube has an issue where it's kind of allowed so much and now that they're trying to rein it back it's like hold on you were fine with everything for all of these years and now you're demonetizing and pulling things away yeah so i think spotify would be restrictive at first have the people like joe rogan and all the big weights go and they show off their video kind of platform and then i feel like they would allow people just to start uploading video because they do want to overtake youtube like a majority of the people who are like us per se, like if we had video to upload, I'm sure we'd upload to fucking both. But like, you know, it'd be nice to have Spotify too, just to like shits and giggles. See, I would like to exclusively do Spotify just so we're playing in a smaller pool and we're not competing against so much. Like video game streamers, for instance, can stay on YouTube. (laughs) Whereas, you know, somebody like, like an IGN or whatever goes exclusively to Spotify. And I think it's, it's a competition in the marketplace type of thing. And I, and I think it's a good thing. I think because YouTube has had the monopoly on everything, a little competition is good. And I think this is like McDonald's has been on the corner forever. And now they're opening up, I don't know, a white castle and we don't have white castle here, but I know white castle is a big deal or even better. Like I love in and out burgers. I, I still dream about the in and out burger I had on my LA trip and okay, it's like Marshall. Oh, it's so in and out burger is so good. Um, but it it's like McDonald's is there and then in and out shows up. McDonald's will still have business and there's still mm-hmm. people that are going to be going there, 
But having a little bit of competition, maybe may it will make McDonald's, who has been complacent, be better instead of having the monopoly. That's my thought. Honestly, I agree. Like, there's not much I can really add there. It's just I'm not a YouTuber, so I don't know the full extent of it. But yeah. it's just been ridiculous where people like, for example, I Dubs, a YouTuber who is more edgy. Like, he does making fun videos and stuff like that. He's been he's still very popular, but you know, he's getting his older videos removed after you know six years because it's bullying and it's kind of like, well, you have a problem. You know, six years ago, no one's watching. Mm. Like, a majority of people aren't watching these videos that are six years old. Like, why are you just taking them down randomly? Yeah, I don't know. Weird. Like I said, it's... In the foot, if anything. Yeah, but, like, you got to agree. Like, again, having competition is good. Having a monopoly on something is, is never really good for the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Because Unless then you Disney. just control everything. What is it, sorry? A bunch of money. Unless you're Disney, because you just make a bunch of money. Yeah, but even then... Disney still has, there's other movie studios. They may be the biggest, right? Like YouTube will still be the biggest. It's not like Spotify will ever take them down. And Disney will always be around. But, you know, you got some of the smaller studios, like your your Blumhouses and your A24s, which have now been blowing up in the past five years. You've got your uh, Warner Brothers. You've got, all, like, so many other studios around. And they all make, the, even the directors of the superhero movies are like, we need all of these movies to do well for the collective good of the superhero movies or the horror movies or whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. And that's because there's other ones. If it was just Disney making their own movies, then it's like, well, whatever. Like, I don't care anymore. You know? Disney Anyways. competes against Disney. Yeah. Exa- well, like, and at that point, like, it's gotten to that point, right? But then you've got these other smaller studios coming in and they're actually competing and they're taking away dollars and people are going to go see, let's say uh, a John wick four over a, I don't know, Dr. Strange, you know, Mm -hmm. I know that's my decision. I will go see John wick four before I see Dr. Strange, like full stop. I started to see John wick three. Oh man. (laughs) It's good. It just overindulges slightly. Yeah. I would say so. Yeah. But it's still good. Still good. Um, that's all I got, guys. I don't know if you guys have anything else you want to add. Kind of not to that too, but in just in general. Oh, there's not much. Like Snyder cuts, really only the biggest fucking piece of news that's happened all quarantine. So yeah, fast. Um, I don't know. Netflix has been doing really well. I just wanted to mention, like, there's a lot of good stuff coming out. Uh, they added Sons of Anarchy season mm-hmm. one so far which is huge because i used to only be on us mm-hmm. um they've added i've been watching animal kingdom which is another one they just added that season but like just regularly a lot of the shows that um myself personally i don't watch but they've just the next seasons have been coming out quick and that kind of stuff so there's lots of good content out there to play and well, i've been like getting Netflix? back to, yeah go ahead you can finish it Oh yeah, and I just the games I've been playing. Like I'm getting back into Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I had to relearn how to play that game. Jeez, it's been a while. But uh, what was fun is I got my old Battle for Middle Earth uh, strategy game working again, mm. and that's like a very old game. I think that came out during like the Windows Seven era, <laughs> um, and you had to download a patch and stuff like that. But that just brings me back. It's a fun strategy game. Yeah, and I want to play. I still want them to re-release the Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, and Return of the King games. Oh, I, I know. play the shit yeah. out of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Secret of the Ooze is coming out on Monday. Oh yes, yeah, okay, love that one. And, and so Space Force is coming movie? out tomorrow. I totally it's the saw second Space one. Force. Yeah, no. Snowpiercer is out now. Um, yeah. I hope they release the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's my favorite one. Secret that of the was just a too. fun one. It's coming out too? Okay, awesome. Yeah, all three of the originals, but... <laughs> yeah, the really third one the they can two. take away. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> the, the second one I love as a kid, but now as an adult, I'm pissed off because of how good the first one is. Like, as a kid, Secret of the Ooze was super fun. The first one is super serious. Then when you get one, as I got older, I'm like, oh, Secret of the Ooze is the one that the parents bitched about and they made this, like, G version g-rated mm-hmm. version and that's why the first one is just so much better but all right well then 
that was it. We are back. Thank you for being patient um, for another week. Like I said, go back and hear that deep dive of the history of the F word if you want. If you're watching it on YouTube, you can watch me uh, rip it up on Spider-Man with, uh, with none of my suits or abilities starting from scratch, which is actually pretty fun. And um, yeah, you can find us on, you can find me on Twitter at the F word G. You can email us at the F word podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following the F word podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and the lazy Canadian on Instagram. And until next time, I'm G. I'm Anthony. I'm Bass. And we are out. 